Well, now let's um, lift our hearts up to God and open them wide up for God to enter, um, to receive Him into our lives. Let's get ready to give thanks for our baptism. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Amen. O living one, for you have created all, and you water the earth abundantly. Oceans and aquifers praise you, rivers and streams bless you. All life is sustained by you, our source. We praise you for Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who frees us from sin and raises us up to new life. Here at this point, we touch the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing through the city of God. Here, death is washed away forever. Here we are grafted into the tree of life with leaves for the healing of the world. We praise you for Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who frees us from sin and raises us up to new life. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this assembly, into this community, and throughout all creation. Cleanse us from our fears and drown our divisions. We praise you for Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who frees us from sin and raises us up to new life. Grant that all may drink of your mercy and peace, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
And yet God is says, wick away it. Often it seems that this Easter joy is just so quickly being drowned by our daily sorrows and various the things we got to do and think about. Help us that this Easter joy, that this hope and this peace stays in our hearts and that no matter what happens in our lives, we always will be coming from your resurrection, Jesus, that we always will be Easter people, no matter what happens. This we pray in your name, Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Jesus, 
whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though Pilate had decided to release Jesus. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in Jesus' name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus Christ has given this man this perfect help in the presence of all of you. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Um, I got the power. <laughs> um, I didn't. 
<laughs> but isn't that, isn't that a great thing? We have the power, right? If we forgive sins, people go free. And if we don't, it's in our hands, right? Well, that's not how Jesus meant it, right? And people are pretty clear about this in, in his entire ministry, that one of the most important things for us is to forgive others. That's actually our job as a church, to forgive others. And, um, and our job is not to kind of think, okay, I can forgive, forgive this person, but we're not going to forgive this person. Long time, long for a day, long time, church did it differently and used this a little bit as a tool of influence and power over about 18, 1700 years of history. So we are really not good with that. But here's that story of that man, um, lame from birth, sitting in front of the temple every day. I, I guess he, he was just like, like a piece of furniture that belongs into a, in, into a room, right? Like you used to have that chair standing somewhere, and if, if it changes, you would notice. This man was sitting there for years, begging for money. And so, it, it's no surprise, I mean, when, when people walk by, right, you, you notice that. When you go and you see people asking for money, for alms, they don't necessarily look into your eyes, right? They look wherever, but they don't look at you. And so it was this man, he didn't look at Peter and John, he just had did his, his, his thing that he probably always said, please people, please people, by the mercy of God, give me some money, right? Help me out here, um, I really need it, you can see. Um, I'm, I'm a crippled man. Well, Peter and John didn't have any money, can really feel with them. But here comes that part of, of course, in ancient times, being lame from birth, being crippled, meant you did something wrong, right? You're punished for whatever sin you have committed. And we know from other stories, maybe someone around you, maybe your parents committed that sin, but you are being punished for something that you did. And so they come, right? they don't even say, God forgive you your sins, and walked away, but they raised this lame man up to be able to stand, to walk, and and that is what he did, right? He did, but he did not just walk. He was leaping. He was jumping, it says. And he followed them into the temple, um, a place that was difficult for him to reach. Uh, scholars debate if he was even allowed in the temple or not. Um, but that's the first thing he did. He goes into the temple, jumping up and down and praising God loudly. And people noticed because he was not there anymore and came and wanted to look at what happened. But I, I think this is, it's a key part of what Jesus is calling us to do, as he sends us into, his, into the world to forgive the sins of any, of everybody. Mm -hmm. Now this is not about forgiveness of sin, but what, what like sin, and this man who was crippled from birth, they have something in common. Mm -hmm. Sickness, being impaired for whatever reason, can separate you from community. Well, well this man was definitely separated from community. And so are many others in our world today who cannot as easily participate in, in events with others for whatever reason, and we have come so far with all the tools that help us to get people involved. But often enough, being impaired for whatever reason there is, can be physically, can be emotionally, um, still keeps people away from community. The same with what sin is doing, it's separating people. Sin is always separating us. 
Because if I sin against you, you're going to have a grudge against me, which doesn't really help our community, does it? So I'm, I'm wondering, how can, we, how can we live this today? How can we live this um, just like Peter and John did, right? Walking up to that man and saying, get up, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. And yeah, no, don't, uh, no, no worries, I'm, I'm not sending you out now. Maybe I should actually, right? Maybe I should do that, say, like, okay, you know how every, every one of you knows someone, uh, go, raise them up. But actually, this is what I want to, with you to do. Go and raise the people up in Jesus' name. But not necessarily only, well, if physical healing needs to be involved, yes, praise be to God. But you also know that not everybody that we pray for is being healed, right? But there's one thing we can do for everyone who is outside of the community. We can invite everyone within to come into this community and open it up. This is what Jesus meant when he sent us out, when he left his peace with his disciples. Right? Kind of like coming back, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. And this peace is not just like, um, hey guys, don't fight. It's part of it. But peace in the Bible means so much more. Um, shalom is, is salvation, is, is healing, is wholeness, is being part of a community of people who are healed. Not necessarily physically, but who are healed in their relationship to God and their relationship to one another. So here's our job. Here's, and I wonder how what we can do to keep people, in, to keep inviting people and including people who are for whatever reason impaired. Maybe Thomas was in a way impaired too, right? Doubting. Not really knowing if he can believe the story of the others. Maybe you have been there before, I think. You have people telling you about how they met God. I know that we and I, we had, oh, that was, this guy was challenging. Um, way back in the days, we were in a small group in a bigger church, and he came and said, oh, praise be to God, but God, listen to my prayers, hallelujah, and I found a parking spot right in front of the church. <laughs> I was like, wow, oh, God, really? This is not what prayer is for, right? Um, he, 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 was, he was really pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he believed it, right? And, and I was like, more like Thomas in this moment. And, uh, I talked to him, and I was just afraid. Um, that, that's, Thomas was, well, he was doubting, and, and yet there is a place in the church for those who doubt. And everyone who's doubting, I can say, good for you, that you do not just easily believe and easily give your life to the Jesus um, mm -hmm. without actually making sure that he's not a sham, but he, that he is the real thing. You want to know that because you're trusting him with your life. So I, what I'm saying is like, this community, this healed community that's living from the risen Christ in their midst, we are living from the risen Christ in our midst. This is a community where we need to go out and raise people up and invite them into this community of healing and wholeness, no matter what it is. So how can we make room for people who are impaired in whatever way um, that, that is, right? What are we doing is um, the big question now <coughs> with people who are neurologically different, whatever that means, right? But like who experience life, community different than we do. What do we do with people who are in a wheelchair? Um, how can we open up worship for them? What are we doing with the people who don't have a car, who cannot drive by night, and so on and so on? 
Let's become this community of shalom um, in this world. And maybe more important this year than ever, a community of shalom that is not getting involved in the fights in the world, We're talking about an upcoming election, right? Um, and there will be a lot of challenges to keep this peace um, in ourselves, but even keeping that peace with others. And I do think that forgiveness is just is a great start, right? Instead of going the way of the world of always blaming someone else for whatever goes wrong, to look at ourselves and say, okay, what do I do? What do I do wrong? And go with this attitude of forgiving, um, even in difficult conversations. So here we are, people of Jesus, with the risen Jesus Christ in our midst. Let's go and raise some people up in this world. Amen.
please be seated. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, Hear your creation cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, Hear your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, other first responders, health care providers, and international aid workers in working for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear, hunger, <coughs> thirst, or unhoused. God of grace, your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe, especially the people in war-torn countries, including Gaza, Ukraine, and Sudan. Restore safety, adequate nutrition, and medical care to all, especially children, pregnant women, and kidnapped hostages. God of grace. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially Alan, Sonia, Carlotta's family, Beth, Marilyn, Janice, Barbara's family, and Julie's family. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God, God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. You will now receive the offering. After. After. Oh. Special music, then the offering. <laughs>
May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true wine. Amen. Amen.
and there's wine and juice and water, whatever you prefer, come to the table for everybody, everyone is welcome. body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's hands. Amen.
and go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.